Prepare your fields, Iowa. Things are about to get corny. Welcome to RSS Cast. I am your host, William Goodwater. I'm joined by our CEO of Right Stick Studios, Nick Rogers. Say hello. Hello. And we're also joined by Chief Operating Officer, Ethan Merrill. Now, Ethan, no cursing. Shove it up your... Um, great. Great. We got editing. I'd like to welcome everyone to our inaugural episode. I think uh, everyone's excited. Uh, I'm definitely excited. We've been trying to do this for a little while. Unfortunately, life happens, but hey, we're here. Why don't we get right into some right stick news? Nick, let's talk about how good the pre-alpha launch, uh, how well it did. Uh, I think it did pretty good. Um, uh, we were able to launch on time, at, or sooner than on time, an hour early. Um, uh, we got some a lot of um, feedback, uh, a lot of bug reports, which thanks everyone for uh, reporting the bugs, because uh, we can only find enough ourselves. We're getting to uh, fixing all those bugs. They should be all uh, remedied by the uh, next update. Right. Um, I personally handled all the bug notifications, and I think you guys all... Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, I do have a live bug feed on the Midhill page of rightstickstudios.com if you guys want to check out what we've been able to log in in terms of bugs, it should be there. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be doing a restart count on that when uh, the new update happens, we'll discuss that later, but you guys will know about it when it does happen. More importantly, we will transfer over any information from the current uh, bugs so that you guys know what was fixed in the current version. Of course, there will also be a, um, an update. There'll, all the bug fixes will be also recorded in the update log for pre-alpha 0.28 and yeah. they're on. In terms of uh, pre-alpha 0.2a, let's talk about that. How's that going out for us? Uh, that is also going pretty well. Um, a little, a little delayed right now, because uh, I still have to uh, fix those bugs. <laughs> um, but of course, the um, the date that I had set up was only an ETA. Uh, reaching it was a bonus, not a requirement, because uh, I'd rather have the, each update actually having all the updates that I promised, and not just shoving something out half. Don't worry, we'll censor that. Uh, no cursing, Nick. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't want to have the game unfinished, and I value the, the finished product more than reaching deadlines. I think uh, I could speak for all of us at Right Stick. <clears throat> we don't mind a little bit of waiting. It doesn't even matter for our games. I'm talking like any game in general. Anytime uh, any company announces that they're going to be a little late on the game, I always think the best about it. It only and means I, they're going to work harder and longer. Yeah. It's not well, like they're going to sit there twiddling their thumbs the whole time. Well, not always. Sometimes <laughs> it is just PR doing their thing. Sometimes it's uh, this and that saying that, and it doesn't have anything to do with the game market. But I always look at the light side of it and hope that they are working on small little fixes that will mean for a better product in the end. I, th I think it's... Uh, I, I th I'm pretty sure that no matter what company is working on a game, it, it's probably uh, true that th they, they want the game released just as badly as everyone else. <laughs> true. I think uh, in terms of uh, 0.2a, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's not even, it's like over the weekend. Yeah. It's, it's... not even, it's not even going to be like a full week. It's going to be over the weekend. We're just going to fix up a few more things when we have some more free time. Because Nick actually has like a, a part-time job combined with all the work he does on Midhild. He is the main programmer, artist, and ev practically everything on Midhild. And he does a part-time job, so he's doing amazing work in such a short period of time. I really thank you, Nick, for all the hard work you're putting towards it. You're welcome. 
any more information about 0.2a? Uh, well, um, the major things I am working on in uh, 0.2a is, um, considering that it's called the menu update, it primarily consists of migrating uh, all the um, menu features to um, a much uh, better coded, better functioning uh, menu system. I believe it should be much easier for people to understand, work with, and control. For one, there's uh, no longer going to, at least for the time being, there's not going to be mouse support or heavy reliance on the mouse. Uh, so, but that is, but that is planning to come on back a little bit later. Potentially, mostly. not not uh, nothing confirmed. Nothing confirmed. Uh, I mean, it's possible, but I suppose you know, it, I guess it could be in there just for it, in case anyone does want to use a mouse. I relied too much on the mouse, because I believe I was drawing too much inspiration for both, like, the way that Legend of Zelda handled it, um, and Minecraft, and that just, it didn't weld together as much as I had. And now you're going with, uh, more controller support. Uh, what kind of controller are you basing this off of? Uh, at the moment, I actually mapped the, uh, the controls to... Uh, Super Nintendo controller, or it also works for st uh, standard uh, modern controllers. Anything, uh, PlayStation, Xboxes, all that kind of stuff. Point is, it can fit on a 12 button controller. There's no controller support at the moment, but there will be in the future. Play uh, near future updates. Uh, as for right now, it's it's just going to be relying on the keyboard for now. Yeah. So bear in mind that when you pick up the uh, next copy. Uh, we won't actually have control setup, but we will have it pre-set up. Mm -hmm. So just remember, it's going to be off of keyboard, and it's going to run. Uh, you're going to be able to handle it a lot smoother than the previous version. I personally had an uh, issue moving around and using the menu system. This one's actually a lot smoother. Not necessarily the best yet. Again, this is more set up for a controller than it is a keypad for right now. But it's much smoother than before. And luckily, that's what um, custom key binding is in there for. In case any, yeah. you know, because everyone has their own control preferences. Um, and so I wanted it to be accessible to anyone to play comfortably. Right. Everyone likes to do it something different. So people have different keyboards, all that kind of stuff. So we're trying to cater to as much variety and options, whether controller, mouse, all that stuff. Hopefully we could get all that done. I'd also like to mention that in the new menu update, um, I'm hoping that the new layout should make it much easier for people to access things in the menu. Because um, I know I had a couple of personal messages saying, like, how do I do crafting? So I tried to um, arrange everything around so that it was more clear where things are. If I'm right, you actually removed the the little micro windows that you had in the menu system before. Yeah, um, like as much as I uh, was proud that I was able to make something like that, it just, it, um, just kind of backfired. It got too clunky. Yeah, it got too clunky. And I just realized I might as well just kind of lay out everything, you know, um, have everything more streamlined and accessible rather than having like customizable windows because, and especially because there wasn't a whole lot of room for those windows anyway. The only thing I could really find to, that was really worth moving around was the, um, the status screen. And along with uh, some of the bug fixing I have already done, um, of course everything that was uh, wrong, any bugs related to the old menu system uh, should be uh, fixed. And I also, I also rewrote the collision system. Huge rewrite on that. Uh, yeah, it was um, actually it, w it was very, very easy to do. It, um, but uh, it was simple. It, it was simple to write, but it did a lot in terms of handling. It's a much much smoother. It should. I'd like to think it's perfect, at least for what the content that's in it. Like I, I've already I threw myself into a tiny room with a bunch of weird corners, uh, with a bunch of enemies, and I was able to get it so that he didn't clip into the walls or anything pretty much forced the game to break at the biggest points possible and it didn't break at all I think, there's, I think I still need to test for like high speed collisions that will come in later <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and did that fix the item collisions too because I know that somebody had complained about that specifically how yeah, items so clip into walls the, um, 
Yeah, that since the items did do use the same collision code, they should be fixed. Oh, okay, cool. Also, like, items, uh, like, certain gold and other things that fly off the enemy, they, uh, they're also being fixed, too? Yes. Well, it sounds like everything's going good for 0.2a right now. A good overhaul for just being only, what, 20 days or so? It's been in roughly 20 days. That's pretty impressive for such a big change to, like, Midhild already. Yeah, and it actually took a bit longer than I expected, but... <laughs> still, very impressive. I have to say I'm really proud of how Midhild's coming out, especially uh, just between now and um, the original release. These improvements to the game, I feel like, are exhibiting what Midhild truly is. What about 0.3a, the next future update? Also known as the combat update. Oh. Ooh. Well, some of the things I plan to add in 0.3a is, of course, uh, various uh, new things that um, improve combat. Uh, for one, I'm going to add a few more enemies now that the collision system is working and I can work with uh, a better AI. Um, like, I intended to have a certain enemy that would actually chase um, you around. I'm going to add bows and arrows. The new arrow cycling slots. Oh ah, yes. I, yeah, that, that, that's that is built into the menu right now. Uh, they are special slots that you can put items in, and when you have an, a bow selected as your current item, you can s cycle through uh, four different slots, so you can easily handle your types of arrows. Which means there's going to be multiple different kinds of arrows, not just a basic standard yeah. kind of arrow. Yeah, there, there's there are there are standard arrows that are just derived from being stronger, like metal arrows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's also going to be elemental arrows, exploding arrows, um, all all kinds of fun there. Uh, yeah, I'd love to explain more, but <laughs> those will come in later update. Sounds good. There are also I'll finally add a wands. Uh, I'm going to add some uh, other weapons. Um, I'm also going to improve animations, because uh, right now they're a little choppy, uh, and they, I don't believe like a lot of the animations uh, represent my current my, my level of skill. I'm going to add more uh, stats, add most stats already, but I'm going to actually uh, apply them into the game so they, they feel like they're actually there, All right. rather than numbers. Uh, and the largest uh, part of this uh, update will be you can dodge now. Well, you will be Ooh, able to dodge, of course. Dodging. Uh, yeah, um, originally I was going to have like an item that did some sort of dodging, but after a couple of suggestions, I realized I should probably actually add it. it it's simply, it's called roll dodging. Are we going to magically be able to go faster backwards <laughs> on the field <laughs> oh, the, by the, roll the dodging? Of time, so the the Ocarina of Time uh, speedrun tactic. Yeah. It will, it will make you go faster, but it does consume stamina. Yeah, hmm. stamina is going to be actually a very important part in uh, all these kind of actions. Uh, they're going to require... After a while, you're just going to be completely exhausted, and then... I have I have a tweak stamina a little in the current update, um, but in a combat update, I'll be tweaking... Um, well, of course, I'll be, tw I'll be tweaking it for as long as needed to be. Um, because the biggest part of making sure that mid -hill works, and one of the biggest reasons we do need to have open alpha, um, beta access, um, or, or just, just testers in general, is because, uh, there's, there's so many things in Midhill, uh, all these little tiny stats going up and down, um, is we're gonna need people to say, yeah, this is totally unbalanced, and whatnot. Uh, please, please nerf a next patch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hopefully I'll at least, uh, have a um, grip on that concept. Everything sounds good there. Uh, I'm really excited for that because I think uh, for what Midhild is, uh, like a large portion of the game is going to be combat. And yeah. if we don't focus that early on, we're not going to have a real good game. And once we actually get that part, we'll actually have like a legitimate feel of a game. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad to hear that that's coming along really well. Yeah. And coming down the pipelines real shortly. 
yeah, the, 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 this update and the next update really are one of the um, largest um, definitions of how Midhill feels and plays. Right. I feel like this is going to be really big, really close, and uh, we're still in pre-alpha, and we're handling the like the core meat of this game early on. Yeah. And making well, be- sure it's polished as best as possible. Yeah, I, be- I believe the meat of the game needs to be handled first, then I can add things. Then we'll make a real big sprawling world for you guys. <laughs> so, on to uh, today's fan question uh, from Right Stick Studios. We had someone email me, and uh, I will be taking fan questions uh, for, on future episodes. So, drop me an email at william.g at rightstickstudios.com, and I can very well put it on the show. As for this question today, will Midhild have X language support? And I'd like to say ahead of time, we don't have much language skills other than English, and barely even that. <laughs> and gibberish. And, and gibberish. gibberish. Yeah, I have to say that the most realistic answer to that question is that uh, unless if someone approaches us specifically uh, with the intention of doing some translation for us, it's probably going to be one of those things that relies more on like a fan's translation or something like that in general. Um, not entirely sure how uh, Game Maker would help us support something like that because I haven't been working with it, obviously. But um, I feel like that's going to be the most realistic like way to get a certain language supported. Plus, not only that, uh, bear in mind, this is our first game as our company. And to say, oh yes, we're going to be able to put this uh, this language in just fine. We can't say that. I mean, right. like how many other uh, indie companies uh, go out and say their first game during pre-alpha, nonetheless, uh, can claim to make support of that. Even after the release, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. even after. It's... I mean, I suppose that like like post-release. Um... Like, if, if we do see a large amount of people requesting uh, a certain, um, you know, language right. support, as we, we could try to look into it as best as we can, especially if, if we happen to have uh, the funds for it. And I'm not saying, boo-hoo, it's a lot of work, don't want to do it. We just but don't have the it's talent. It's a lot of work, and we it, I, I really hope we can do it, but... Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll try our best, but we can't promise. Out of the three of us, we all have English, that's obvious, but does any three of us actually speak another language? I, no, I, I was hoping to learn French sometime. But... Same here. And, Ethan, the only thing you could speak is coding. Uh, that's not true. I actually have a background in Japanese, but I haven't studied it in a while, so... Oh, well. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you, you guys didn't know that? No. No, oh, okay. actually, not at all. No, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's been so long that I, I would basically have to start over from scratch, but, like, I do have a bit of a background in it, so... All right. I mean, that's the ex- that's literally the extent of our language support here. Yeah. I definitely couldn't, like, translate a whole, like, game with, like, you know, casual conversations and stuff like that, so don't get any hopes up for that. So. Yeah, no, no, no confirmed Japanese support. No, no, that's not, no confirmation. Okay. Unless you want, like, the, how the Japanese translate games to us, how the language <laughs> comes out, how some of those games have uh, some really cheap uh, translation teams. No, we don't want to do that to you guys. No, if, if, if we do do translation, we want it to be quality, so that it, you know, it, it, it it reflects the game because I know that like poor translation can really ruin a game. Why don't we get on to the general news now? For this section, uh, we just gathered up some topics that we want to talk about, uh, not involving Right Stick Studios at all, but this is all stuff outside in the game industry talking about whatever's coming up. First off, I would like to bring up the fact that Warner Brothers is in production of a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Uh. <laughs> and I don't know how I should feel about this. Very, very scared. 
I think it would actually make a good, scary movie for what they're trying to do. But I don't watch scary movies, so I'm not going to watch it. Right. I, I feel like... I feel like the plot would work out really well for a movie. Like, I'm not particularly all that big of a fan of the game or anything, but it does it does have a lot of those good, like, scary puppet tropes that would make for a good one, you know what I mean? Like, right. I think it will revert, uh, look at the industry of scary movies and change a little bit how we see it, usually. Because there's a lot of scary movies that are really bland and everyone knows what to expect i mean the last time we had like a legitimate change in that paradigm was like the blair witch project uh paranormal activities that you, kind of thing you think this is going to change the horror movie industry yeah probably not but you yeah know. i was gonna say i was gonna say you sound a little bit too optimistic about this movie like <laughs> well, I'm not I, gonna I, think, watch I think it could like i think you know it could be that unpredicted like you know like it's because of its subject matter they just like pull something out of left field kind of thing but like it well i think it's the subject matter that actually what i'm saying most of all because if you look at like 90 percent of like scary movies it's mostly oh we're alone in the house oh there's a psycho murder kind of thing and that's like a lot of it and it's like oh there's a ghost there's a demon there's this there's that inside the house and it's just like this is going to really change the setting uh, and characterization a little bit. I mean, this is just, like, haunted theme park mixed with, like, Chucky, though. Like, if you think about it. True. <laughs> like, like I, I, I feel like this has been done before. I can't oh, it, remember any specific it, things, though. It probably has, but at the same token, I, I don't know. I feel like this will have a positive influence instead of a negative one for i mean i'm definitely like i'm i'm glad that like uh someone looked at a video game franchise especially one that isn't all that terribly old and thought it would make a cool movie like that that might be a positive change it has on movies in general and the relationship between hollywood and the game industries like, and also the fact that it's an indie game yeah, I was yeah, just about yeah. to say, it's an indie game and a uh, third installation of it, and Warner Brothers picked that up like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. like, 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 it's, like, just imagine if, like, we started getting, like, indie game movies. Well, there was talk about Minecraft becoming a movie, but that got shut down. You know what would be a really horror, uh, bad horror film? Uh, Binding of Isaac, the movie. Oh, yeah. That would actually Ooh. be... That would be both... I, I'd probably enjoy that, but that would be kind of screwed up. Like, yeah. Uh, knowing like, how the game is, I'm already, like, no, straight up, no... Like, like I'm thinking well, you... that, like, Binding of Isaac, the movie, would be in this, in, like, like reminiscent of, like, the Binding of Isaac trailer. Yeah. Which I'd rather, like... Mm. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. It, it but they're not good. making a Binding of Isaac movie. They're making a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Which is so still not bad. Yeah. I, it, it's, it's, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not a scary movie fan in the first place. so I, I, I'm just proud of the industry willing to look at yeah. right. games. I think that's the thing I'm taking away. I'm not entirely looking forward to it or anything. but yeah. I, I will say I can't wait to see the trailer. I just want to see what direction are they going to go with it. I want to at least see, okay, this is what the source material is, and this is their direction. Like, okay, I like that. Yeah. I'm not going to watch the movie because I hate the hell out of scary movies. Uh, yeah, because at least scary movie trailers aren't nightmare fuel because they can't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're on public television. They can only go so far. On to the next subject, Smash Brothers. Yes. Oh, I love Smash Brothers, and with the new recent version of Smash Brothers for 3DS and Wii U, uh, we've been getting talk about the DLC character votes, because uh, Sakurai announced that we are actually going to get, uh, you could go off and submit your own character uh, from whatever video game you want and submit it to Smash Brothers. And I want to talk about this and what your guys' vote is generally. Shovel Knight. Well, that was... Dang quick. it! 
<laughs> yeah. I just think he might. I just think he'd have a really good move pool. Yeah. And uh, no, I completely agree with you. And if I'm correct, I heard that uh, was it Yacht Club. Uh, is that yeah. who they are? Yacht, Yacht. Yacht Club. Okay. Uh, they they even said that no, we totally want to be a part of this. If everyone supports it, we'll be a part of this. In fact, a lot of indie game companies are like trying to push their character into it and mm -hmm. are trying to uh, say, hey, we want our character in this game. We're unfortunately a little too early, a little too late for that. <laughs> to say for <laughs> Midhild, <laughs> we want Eileen in Smash Bros. No, we're not going to argue with that because our game's barely even out. Especially because like the number one character from any of our planned games is you know well you know still in plan yeah, <laughs> yeah. well we ha we're gonna have like a like legitimate great character that would make for smash but unfortunately it's not time and it, if we did this like a few years earlier a right stick studios a few years earlier then maybe we might ask you guys for votes but not right now maybe smash five you guys Hope for Smash 5, folks. <laughs> All right. But if not Shovel Knight, then who else? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't realize that we were all going to pick Shovel Knight. <laughs> no, actually, I'd, I wasn't going to pick Shovel Knight. In fact, oh, really? Who are you going to pick? Actually, and here comes the funny thing is I'm going to go with a veteran from the Smash Brothers series. I'm going with, uh, and I know some people are going to get angry as soon as I say this, but Ice Climbers. Ah! Uh, <laughs> and I know that they've already stated, oh, we can't do that because Smash Brothers uh, for the 3DS can't handle two characters. But listen to me out on this one, and this is how I actually brought it up to them. I said, we could just have a single Ice Climber on the field, tweak the move set a little just so it works better for uh, a single character instead of two, and there's eight alternate costumes that you could have have half of them nana and half of them popo and i feel like that allows for some of us who actually had ice climbers as their main could still have that main back okay I, i'm a little bit confused though because aren't there characters on the wii u version that aren't on the 3ds like no. couldn't they just add a ice no. climber character to the wii u or they decided that they wanted to keep all the characters on all versions. Oh, okay. I guess I could half understand, but half not understand. Because, like, like we have a lot of stage variations, music variations, and, um, b between the two. And so I wonder why they can't just do one character, if that's a problem. Right, exactly. It just, like... Is it really just the fact that they can't have two characters on the screen? Because, I mean, we're getting, uh, there's talks about we're going to get Roy from Fire Emblem in <laughs> Smash Brothers, and yet I, I can't even get a, a single Ice Climber in. Yeah, I do. I do feel like only having one of them would change the thing that was fun about that character. Well, characters, but yeah, yeah. I, I guess I see your point is if if they can't have the two of them then why can't they just have the one like, right i mean you could technically play as one if the female character dies so i mean yeah i would see them amping up his move set to uh like work closer to having both of them on the field or what if they actually had it so that like they were they like stuck closer together um so that like like rather than having like like nana be the separate entity she's just she's there she's just like kind of part of the animations right so you're she, always playing as both ice climbers but you don't have this separate ai kind of like how duck hunt dog uh, works where uh -huh. technically the bird is there mm -hmm. but they're uh it's the same animation they're the same character mm -hmm. i see where you're coming at and they could very well just do that but it's it's one of those things that I kind of that's why I petition that, you know I I'm probably gonna get way overvoted by everyone else's decision so unfortunately 
That's Su- just how it is. Such is democracy. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get outvoted by Shrek. Uh, <laughs> well, Shrek is, li- Shrek is live, so... I, I get that, but... <laughs> Ice Climbers, come on. They're veterans, and they got removed. I'm really sad. They were my main. <laughs> so, other than... Uh, uh, Shovel Knight, you guys, uh, you wanted something else? Uh, yeah, like, what would be your other vote if it wasn't Shovel Knight, Nick? I thought you, uh, before I remember you saying, uh, that you wanted Shantae. Yeah, there's as well. also Sh- Shantae, is also a good choice. Because, like, like, Shantae's been around for a long time since the Game Boy Color. Who's Shantae? Um, <sighs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, an indie company uh, way forward way forward uh, made uh, like multiple Game Boy games she's getting her fourth game soon she's yeah. Shantae has always kind of been like a hidden gem so I can't be like Ethan why haven't you heard of her but Ethan why haven't you heard of her oh, <laughs> oh no I'm that guy <laughs> I've only heard I've only heard very little about her in general even before Nick picked up a game yeah, like, I've heard of her for a little while, but, like, it, and I've just started to play the series. It, it is a, it is a oh, fun little game. Um, and, I, and, I, and I backed their uh, their Kickstarter uh, for their fourth title. Oh, okay. Like, like I said, Shantae has been around since, like, the Game Boy. Uh, she's, she's been on every, like, all of her games have been on a Nintendo console. Their games have been exclusively on Nintendo, so... It's oh, wow. PC as well. But. Well, PC as well, but in comparison, it's like Nintendo has like good connection with them, so there's a good chance of that. Yeah, mm. and while they're indie, they're still very large. They've made they've made quite a bit of uh, of well known games: Ducktales Remastered, Oh, um, Mighty right. Switch Force, uh, a few others. Ethan, what about your uh, DLC choice other than Shovel Knight? Um, for me, it's probably a toss-up between Banjo Kazooie and Rayman. I couldn't really decide which of those two I prefer. I I think that B- Banjo Kazooie is probably the more realistic since they were on a Nintendo console at some point. Like that's I, where it's from. But. No, I I gonna say not. I think that's like the least likely out of that choice, just because Microsoft owns it. Well, yeah, I know that's the case now, but I, I imagine that there's some way that that could be worked out. On the other hand, I would really like to see Rayman or a Rayman character in Super Smash Brothers, because that'd be cool. But well, it's actually, it's actually kind of funny, because uh, that one, uh, I don't know who his name is, but there was uh, that special leak that said that Rayman was going to be in Smash Brothers. Oh, really? Yeah, there was a special leak, and this guy made, like, a really good drawing of what looked like a 3D model. Okay. He did an amazing job on it, and he actually, like, put it out on the web, and even, like, photoshopped his uh, character profile, uh, Rayman's character profile, in the menu screen. Oh, cool. He did, like, a whole animation using After Effects and all that kind of stuff to really make you think that he was actually going to be in Smash. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they announce. Uh, then he's like, "Oh no, it's just me showing off that I could draw characters for Smash Brothers and how they would look and all this stuff." And it was just to promote his work, which great way to do it. Right, yeah. right. But Worked at the out. same at the same token, uh, it kind of got everyone pumped for Rayman, and I think I think Rayman has a higher choice uh, choice in the popular vote. And Nintendo saw that and like, why don't we at least let them vote? Let me let's see what they could make. And I've heard somewhat. I've heard a couple of discussions about it, and saying like like because apparently there's like there's an American ballot and then there's a Japanese ballot. Mm. Ooh. Because and it's like because Nintendo is centered, centered in Japan, the Japanese ballot probably has a higher um, influence. It probably does. Um, not not probably to say that they're to- totally going to disregard the American ballot. Um, it's just going to go right in the fire. <laughs> All right. I think we've uh, beat this horse to death now with the yeah. smash votes. Uh, let's hope that 
everything goes well and may the best character win. Uh, on to some other news. Uh, Sony! <laughs> oh god. I, I love this because I backed this. What, I, I was actually going to be a big fan of this before, then I walked away. Uh, Sony buys out the game streaming service on live. Just to shut them down on April 30th. Move, yeah. Sony. Like, Don't curse, Nick. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing my best, Nick. You can't curse. Nick isn't a bad word. It's a person's name. <laughs> Not when you're using it in that term. And now Way I to Richard it up, Nick. <laughs> Way to pull a Richard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Richard, move, Sony. Richard, move. Um, it's, it's really hard because, like, I know people, uh, I don't know, I don't know anyone personally, but I know that they actually had physical hardware that was only set up for on live. Mm -hmm. And the problem is no one's getting a refund and those pieces of uh, stuff are completely useless other than what they were meant for. And if the service is shut down literally people paid hundreds of dollars for a piece of plastic that's worthless now i mean that's that that is a good point that's also something that just happens in general like like you don't think about it all that often and i suppose that like you know say something like the original xbox is still usable as a standalone single or local game system but like they shut down the service that like makes you know like like say somebody only had an Xbox to play Halo online multiplayer, like you know you couldn't do that unless if uh, I I think that's a bad example because the multiplayer was transferred over to the Xbox 360. But you get right. what I mean though, right? Like right. like like it, services shutting down for old hardware is just something that happens. But um, this is different. This is uh, the idea that people paid. Uh, a couple hundred dollars and it hasn't even been that long since they bought it and more importantly there's no other use for that device there's it doesn't have any games in it it doesn't have any media player it has absolutely nothing other than streaming capability and there's not even a way to mod it to physically use it for anything else also the controller's useless after that like everything that they made for it is worthless just because Sony buys them out hmm. and the question I want to know is did OnLive know that Sony was going to shut them down I thought you I thought like when, I thought that was that I, was I have a feeling that they didn't know well I sure hope that that was the case because I mean damn what a bad way to go yeah, I would I, I would like to hope that they didn't know. Right. Uh, same here. It's just like if anyone like personally like has themselves buy out just to shut down the product, I find that just kind of an upset move in general. However, if they did know, I guess you know that's their choice. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is their yeah. choice. But damn. I feel I feel like that the best thing to do for the people is like do recalls of the devices and all that, but Sony's not going to do that. Sony, so I've already read through the thing. It's just like the only thing they could do is if you purchase after this time, like February. If you purchased anything after February, you could get refund. Oh but, wow! And it's just like that's the best they're going to do. And just like wow, still kind of a move. I mean, yeah, February is a little bit later than the announcement, but that's after the uh, the Christmas vacation. So if anyone got that during Christmas, boy, mm -hmm. I feel bad for them. See, see, the thing about this is that, like, whether or not OnLive knew that Sony was going to do this, it's one of those things where you have to think, what else was Sony going to do? Like, was it going to actually try to keep two services alive, or was it going to buy one out and kill it so that its dominant service gets more of the market share? Like, or, and, or you know, does the proper thing and just merge the uh, accounts together? I mean, that would that would have been the most probably ethical thing to do, but it, it also would probably 
probably involve overhead that a corporation like Sony isn't necessarily concerned with. Because remember, Sony isn't primarily a game company. Sony is a hardware company. Oh yeah, the, the, like they do a lot of things. It's not just gaming. But like it, it's gotten to the point where I think that they're starting to take like the whole PlayStation thing seriously, and they're starting to really take you know they're starting to learn that the video game market is extremely powerful right now, but like they, they are, you know, still only concerned with the hardware aspect of it in a certain right. way too. I get that. And it's just, yeah. it's just sad to see uh, on live get shut down. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't, I've only like played like demos on it, but I thought yeah. it was a great. I thought it was a great system and a setup for whoever wanted it that could uh, use it. I thought, in general, uh, like the part about it that makes me sad is that I thought that the on live model was possibly going to change the way that video gaming was done. Like whether or not on live the company, you know, that that particular product changed it. I thought the entire idea of having streaming video games was good, and it's kind of sad to see the company that was starting to try and pioneer it, you know, basically just got took down, like, you know. And not only that, I haven't seen anyone directly try to recreate that market. Right. They've, uh, everyone's just kind of fallen in line that Steam is the best way to do it. And yeah. I, I agree, Steam is the best way to do it. Yeah, but for, but so. I get where they were trying to come at because a lot of people just don't have high-end computers to play the newest mm -hmm. games. I, I felt like it was a great thing, and it's sad to see it shut down. Mm -hmm. And uh, on our final discussion, uh, last bit, is on April Fool's, we had a lot of April Fool's jokes, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but one that was actually used for marketing, which is actually pretty smart, because if you're ever going to announce something that might sound weird... See how uh, use it April Fool is to advertise it. That way, people uh, you could see how many people actually are excited for it. Um, the Smart Boy, a case for phones to work as full Game Boy handhelds. Pretty much, uh, you slide your phone and it hooks up uh, through the USB slot, whatever type you're using, and there's actually a cartridge slot on the back of it. Where you could actually put old Game Boy games. What? In the back of it, and uh, the there's physical buttons that you could press on the pad, and it's just like having the old uh, Game Boy. Oh man. Although it kind of sounds a little uh, like like why don't you just get, get a Game Boy then? Well, well, because, because the original don't... Game Boy isn't produced anymore. <laughs> right. Sure. And plus, everyone ha uh, generally everyone has a smartphone. So having this little addition to it is actually pretty understandable. Well, plus, yeah, yeah, that does make sense. Not only that, it uses up a screen that would cost more for production if they just try to make a remake of a mm -hmm. uh, Game Boy. Right. Mm -hmm. You, why why use a screen that you can't already and plus all the processing powers in your phone you just have to get an app mm -hmm. so it reduces the cost of the, the case itself to mere pennies compared comparatively I don't know the pricing that they're going with but yeah it probably won't be pennies unfortunately <laughs> pennies on the dollar the point is the point sure. is 99 pennies on the dollar oh <laughs> The point is, it's not going to cost that much in comparison um, to... Now, are they going to make this for Android phones as well? Because it looked like they were only producing this for iPhones, and that kind of made me sad, because right. obviously I don't have to, one. To my own knowledge, all I know is iPhones, but who knows? They might actually... This was just announced on April Fool's, and then they right. turned around and said, oh, by the way, that was actual mar that was legitimate marketing. Right. Which is actually a smart way to see test the waters for your new mm -hmm. product. If no one said anything about it, you just walk away and pretend like that was not a thing. But I think they're just in prototype phase right now. Right. So, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge Game Boy fan. I was more of a Game Boy Advance fan. But I, I completely understand the full use of this, and it could be really nice. I guess it would be nice to have, like, a Pokemon Yellow. 
it would be, it would be really cool actually if like they you know they took a moment to think about it and made the peripheral with all of the Game Boy Advance buttons and then have it reverse compatible with you know those first three generations of Game Boy. Right. I, like, I that could, would be awesome. That would like, be cool. Huh. I think uh, I think it does have a good chance at selling pretty well, especially mm-hmm. for iPhone users. Uh, uh, well, if you really think about it, Android already has emulators. Yeah, but so, it, it's. It, I never like the on-screen buttons. No, like, I know no that, one ever that, does. That makes me like a huge fuddy duddy. I know because like they they're doing the best they can, but it, it just it still isn't the same as like having physical buttons of some kind. True, but you could also get like uh, peripheral attachments and whatnot. That but I want a Game Boy one, John. I, I know want a you. Game Boy one. I know you. Well, contact uh, contact the people behind the Smart Boy. And uh, see about Android. They probably got a lot of people saying, "Well, what about Android?" And they yeah. said, "Well, well, sh- well, shut up. You got emulators. iPhones don't got that." Well, Not that using emulators is a legal thing or anything, kids. Don't emulate. Oh ever. no, no, no. <laughs> we we do not promote emulation of games, no matter how old they are. And whether or not the, the unless you, know, you just... own unless you own the actual physical copy. Okay, now that the police is off my back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. I think uh, that about wraps it up. All right. Uh, this has been R S S Cast, the Right Stick Studios podcast. I'm William Goodwater. I'm Nick Roger. I'm Ethan Merrill. And we'll see you all next time.